Welcome to another episode of the Boss Experience Podcast. My name is Michelle Davis, and I'm your host. And I am here with special guest, Kate Moyer. Wave, Kate! (laughs) All the way from Canada. So this is so exciting. I I love Canada. I love Canadians, right? (laughs) They're always so smiley and friendly. And um, But Kate is here. Um, She's a mom. She's a mentor to other busy moms. She's an international bestseller. And she's a really awesome person. So I'm, I'm excited to be with, be with her today. And today she's talking about how to break free from your nine to five by monetizing five minute pockets of your day. So I am excited to know what that's about because I'm also a mom and, and my kid is much older, uh, 16, but you know, nevertheless, these are all tips that any mom can use because we're all busy. And I think this topic is really, really important because I think a lot of people, um, it's really for those people that are stuck. You know, there's a lot of people in their cubicles, in their, you know, in their office, or maybe they're working from home and being called back into the office, whatever whatever the case is, um, they feel stuck. And I think the greatest way you can empower yourself is to give yourself options because Absolutely. there's nothing worse than to... Um, be treated, mistreated at work, uh, where you spend a great deal of your time. Um, There's nothing worse than to be laid off or let go. And Mm -hmm. you have no, nothing waiting in the wings for you. You have no options. Maybe you had a lot of big ideas and for whatever reason, you didn't act on them. And so I think, you know, what you have to say is really important, Kate, because people think they don't have the time they don't have the time and they kind of sit there and they don't know where to start and they don't know what to do. And, 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 and so I think you're going to fill a big void for busy people. And, and I'm not sure if I mentioned, but Kate is also a podcaster too. And so her podcast, which is, what's the name again? The mom boss mentor. The mom boss mentor is designed to help moms actually, um, Fit, you know, not only listening to her podcast in like 15 blocks. So she, you know, she actually operates around like, you know, helping people be more organized with, with limited time, but really giving moms these little gems within 15 minutes so they can come, they can listen to her and they can go back to being, you know, running around after toddlers or their kiddos or whatever it is that they're doing. So you know, so I'm glad, I'm so happy to have Kate here. So Kate, before we get into, you know, the whole spiel about how to fit, um, and, you know, how to start your business and really, you know, work on your business in those five minute blocks, what actually inspired you to become an entrepreneur? Oh my gosh. Yes. That's such a good question. I feel like even as a kid, I was the person who would find some kind of way to make money on the block, you know, like I'd wash my neighbor's car and pick berries from one lady's tree and sell them to the other neighbor. Like I always had kind of an entrepreneur spirit in me, but, um, you know, go through the motions, go to university, get the nine to five job. And I kind of just found myself on this trajectory of the government, government employee. Um, and so I'll never forget the day. It was September 21st, 2015. I was sitting in the, in the rocking chair, nursing my one-year-old. I had another one on the way and it was like the 367th day in a row of just like nursing a baby, you know? And I'm like, I have no hobbies. I go to work. I come home. I nurse my child. I do the things and I go to bed. And that was kind of my life. And I thought, there's got to be something more. And so what kind of hobby could I do? And that's when I kind of realized that I've always been a person who my hobby is something that is monetized, something that is uh, productive in adding to the family's bottom line. That's just my personality. And so I decided to monetize my hobby and become an entrepreneur, uh, really within those five minute pockets before picking up my daughter from daycare or on my lunch break or my coffee break, like literally within those little pockets throughout your day, I started building my business day after day. Um, and 
uh, it spiraled into uh, what it is today. So I'm really, uh, I guess, just organically became an entrepreneur with a little bit of uh, rationale in there, I guess. Yeah. And, and, you know, coming from, you know, a kind of a place where, you know, I had, uh, you know, having a child, you're there, especially if you have the, you know, benefit of being able to be home with your child, you know, people think that, you know, child rearing is not work and that being a stay at home mom is not, you know, not work. And I, and, you know, when my daughter was first born, probably the first year I was able to stay home with her. Um, but you know, I, it was, it's a very lonely time too. And you, your mind is just there with it's just kids and, and it's like this routine and you can kind of, you, you lose yourself in it basically. So, um, you know, so many moms don't always look to a hobby, you know, sometimes they just get really frustrated and, you know, they're trying to figure out like, oh my God, like, you know, can I have a break? Uh, and so it could be very um, stressful. Um, so I just want to mention that. But when you think about, so when you went back to work, what was that like for you? Yeah. So when I went back to work, my first child was one. So in Canada, we get um, anywhere from 12 to 18 months off. And so I went back to work uh, just about 10 and a half months in. I was I'm a workaholic, like I like to work. And so I went back to work. And as you said, I'm kind of going out of my mind being home all day. I love stay at home moms. They have a special skill set because that was not my skill set. That was not my thing. Uh, so I love the balance of work and family life. And so when I went back to work, it was kind of, you know, it got into that rut of being home every day after my husband would go golfing, he'd go play hockey, he'd had all his hobbies. And I just hadn't, I had no hobbies because I had let everything slide being pregnant and then being at home for, you know, almost a year. I didn't really have a group of people. We had moved to a new town. So, you know, there was just like very isolating. And so I started this little business, little side gig, and it was kind of a guilt-free time that I could go and I could leave the house and I could meet people and, you know, and I felt good about it because I wasn't spending money. I was earning money. So I didn't feel the guilt that some moms feel, um, which is real guilt. Like, ah, oh, you know, like I'm taking time not only away from the family, but I'm going out to spend money. I felt like, okay, I'm going out, but at least I'm making money. I'm bringing money home. Um, and that was just something in my mind that not everyone feels, but that was my issue. And so at first it was just kind of fun, but then it kind of grew, like it snowballed and it became bigger and bigger and bigger. And so when I had my second daughter about six months later, uh, I had this full blown business that was starting to blossom into a real, real company. And so I decided for my second child to uh, kind of balance motherhood with building a business um, while I didn't have the pressure of working nine to five. And it blossomed from, you know, a team of four people to a team of 75 people. Uh, so that is a different challenge. You know, when you'll have like a small little group or a small team or a small business, you really can kind of do a little bit of everything. But when it becomes this full blown thing, you know, yeah. like almost like a, you know, like a, an actual part time or full time job. Now it was a full time job, a full time side gig job, and a full time two kids under two. Um, plus, where do you fit yourself in there too? So there was a, a period of struggle, and I don't want to skip over that struggle because sometimes I feel like people think I have to do it all, and I have to be the superhuman, and I have to be perfect, and I have to have a perfect house, and I gotta look perfect, and my kids have to look perfect, and. And I will tell you, none of us were perfect. <laughs> my house was not perfect. My kids, they're dressed, they're clean, they're fed, they're good. You know, like my my level of standards was not everybody was matching with perfect bows in our hair. It was, we were presentable. <laughs> you know, we're all taken care of and we're happy. You know, at the end of the day, like that was our standard. And so if anyone right now is feeling overwhelmed and feeling like suffocating, I was there when I had a full-time job that was getting super stressful. My side gig was now like 150 people on my team. And I remember driving to a meeting for work and 
Um, I called and I said, I'm not coming to the meeting. I'm going to the hospital. I'm pretty sure I'm having a heart attack. Oh my God. And I called my husband and I said, uh, you need to meet me at the hospital. I think I'm having a heart attack. And so I went to the hospital and they checked everything. And my blood pressure was so high that it was like, almost like a heart attack. It was more of a panic attack because I was feeling so suffocated because I had created this amazing business, but was yet not ready to let go of, you know, something that was secure and safe in the nine to five. And so I went through a period of about a month of planning and strategizing because I'm not a knee jerk reaction kind of person. I'm a very um, well thought out and calculated. And so I went to the accountant, talked to my husband, uh, talked to other people who had made the switch and the jump from a secure nine to five job to full-time entrepreneur. Um, But I said, you know, at the end of the day, all the calculations said nine to five caps me here. My ceiling is only so high. I can't get past that because um, I would have to make some other risky moves. Whereby being my own boss, my ceiling is unlimited. I can do whatever it is, right? Because I'm in control of my own destiny and my own income streams and how far I can grow or become. And so that was kind of a freeing moment of like three, you know, 30 days uh, or a couple of weeks of like really stressful calculations and discussions to finally break free. And I think you bring up a, a, a really good point because I hear, you know, a lot of chatter online about, you know, don't, we don't need to plan and we don't need, you know, as entrepreneurs, just do it. We don't need to, you don't need a business plan. You don't need to, you know, plan things out. You're overthinking. And I think we need to find a balance. What is overthinking and what is being smart um, Mm -hmm. and strategic? Because when you have a family, um, you have to make strategic decisions Mm -hmm. and you can't just do the knee jerk reactions and jump into something. So when, at what point did you leave your, your job? Um, you know, was there a breaking point for you with work? Because yeah. at this point you're having panic attacks, you're trying to balance so much. Um, at what point did you uh, leave your job? Like what was the breaking point yeah. for you? And then how so, did you figure out these five minute pockets? You know, what did that look yeah, like? Absolutely. Yeah, so um, the breaking point was definitely one, the catalyst was the panic attack. Two, was realizing that I was already doing everything I could possibly do with my business to get it to where it was, but I had no extra time. It was like every single night, my husband's going to bed at 11 and he'd be like, you're coming to bed. I'm like, no, I still got an hour. Plus I still have to, you know, get the kids' lunches ready and da, 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 da. You know, like my, my time was suffocating me and I wasn't really living. And that's not what I wanted for my kids to see as an example. But I'll never forget. So we had gone on my birthday. My husband says, what do you want to do for your birthday? I love birthdays. And I take all, every single year of my birthday, I do not work on my birthday. And they said, for my birthday this year, I want to go to our accountant. And I want to see if I <laughs> have saved up enough money to get a job. <laughs> He's like, okay, that's what we're doing for your birthday. And so, you know, we sat down with the accountant and he really just walked us through, okay, what are your expenses every single month? What is your average income that you're earning um, on a regular basis? The low months is super important because if you can live off the lowest month in your 12 months, then you should be okay. Just base your budget off that lowest month and anything else that you earn above that lowest month, save, pretend you didn't even earn it because then you always are building a nest egg. So it's probably the smartest advice I got given. So we did a calculation because there was Christmas coming up and lots of holidays. My husband and I were like, you know what? Let's quit on January 1st, make a clean break. You're good to go and work one more month, just December. So December 17th, I went into work and my boss tore a strip off me up and down. She was having a bad day. It was a toxic work environment that had been building and building. And uh, that day I was, I was the sacrificial lamb, if you will. And so um, I just looked at her and I just said, would you like my resignation today or January 1st? Because either way, I will never be treated the way that you're treating me. And you have zero regard for people um, that work for you. And I thankfully have an escape plan. So what's it going to be? And she was like, 
shocked. Like what you're, you're quitting? Like I didn't want you to quit. I was like, you know, like surf this as an example or a lesson because everyone else is feeling the same way. They're looking for other jobs, but they didn't have an escape plan. I had an escape plan. I had saved up enough money to have three months of wages. So if things like, you know, hit the fan, we would still be okay. Um, most people don't have that safety net. And so I like to think of when you're building a business, you know, it's giving you that freedom to have a choice and to have options. It's giving you that um, voice that you can stand up for yourself and get out of a toxic situation. But it also allows you that confidence to be able to say like, I don't need you, <laughs> you know, like whatever the situation is, whether it's an employer or a relationship or a situation, it just gives you the ability to kind of stand up a little bit taller, say what you need to say and stand up for yourself and choose you. Right. And I think that's the thing is the choice. So pockets of your day, you know, if you look back at when I started the business with a one-year-old and pregnant with a second child, um, to when I was growing the business while I had a kid, um, each life situation um, is the same as even when you have a 16 year old, right? Like you have those five minute pockets while you're waiting for your coffee, you know, to pour, or while you're waiting for food to heat up in the microwave, or while you're waiting for the water to boil, just in the kitchen alone, you have five minute pockets, you know, um, <laughs> while you're sitting waiting for picking up the kids from sports or dance or waiting for, you know, the bus to arrive for the kids to be dropped off or the school bell to come out, you know, those five minute pockets, if you were to sit down and write out your day, minute by minute, you will find five minute pockets and throughout your day, you probably have, you know, 30 to 60 minutes that you can change your scroll to your income producing activities. So you can grow consistently day by day by day um, to build it into something that can give you that freedom and that voice and those choices. Absolutely. That is, you know, that is so important. And it's all about determination. Because people can say, I don't have time, I don't have time, and they won't have the time because they've already convinced themselves that they are not going to have the time. And I think that's that's super key to sit down and really kind of look at your day and say, well, what time, it doesn't look like I have time. I'm skeptical about what time I have, but let me map it all out. Let me put everything into perspective. Even people that commute, you know, they that's time that you can take and, and do something and you know, um, you know, little pockets of, you know, you're at your kid's game and, you know, you're uh, waiting for the game to start instead of maybe socializing, maybe you could go off to a corner and, you know, still a moment there. So I think people will see how their day unfolds when they map it all out. And it's all about determination and it's all about being, being able to, you know, desire, you know, to, be able to find that those pockets of time and you know to be able to sit there you know and you have a lot of folks I'm sure in your office and in many offices that you know when you were in your job that you know felt hopeless because if you don't empower yourself with options you end up in a hopeless situation because unfortunately and and this isn't talked about enough like People like are made to feel crappy <laughs> in jobs. They're undervalued. They're un they're already underpaid, and you know people are frustrated. But rarely do they kind of get up and empower themselves to find other options. So it's awesome that you can do that. That you did that for yourself. It's awesome that you're able to mentor other moms to do that as well. So let's talk about like some of the things we mentioned in the beginning. So let's talk about, um, we talked about Kate Moyer, the mom. Let's talk about Kate Moyer, the mentor. What, like, what does Kate Moyer, the mentor do? Yeah. So uh, the mama's mentor really helps moms go from stuck to allowing themselves to build their dream life. And, and so some people are trying to break free from that situation and need kind of an escape plan. So they need to build an escape plan and they need the strategy on how to launch and build. So definitely helping people through that. There's other people who've already built and already left. And there is a period of like, what did I do? <laughs> you know, there's like, 
<clears throat> at least a season, if not a full 12 months, when you leave your job, everything for the next 12 months is your first time. It's your first January without having that guaranteed income. It's your first, you know, uh, holiday, whatever, vacation, being your own boss and not having vacation time, right? And so there's like kind of... Um, coaching that goes along to kind of help people navigate through those firsts um, and giving them the reassurance and the tools and resources so they can come out on the other side. Because it's really easy to get stuck and frozen, like you said, in your mind, um, or kind of like think like, I can't do this. Our mind will always go to the negative. And so you need someone to kind of help you see the opportunity or the positive side of things. And then when people start to scale, you know, like I think it's really important that even as an entrepreneur, diversified income is something that we should all have. And the reason for that is because what if one thing falls, you still have a backup plan. I had a nine to five and a backup plan. I built that backup plan to a full time. So now I have another backup plan. Always having multiple streams of income to me gave a sense of security. So as people start to blossom or to grow or to expand, um, allowing them to find ways to systemize or duplicate so that they can work smarter, not harder um, and spend less time, but earning the same rate of return. Yeah, and so and it just depends on the phase. It depends on where you're at. Um, is where we help you. And I think, you know, I, I love that you said, you know, the multiple streams of income, because sometimes people think that that means they need to operate multiple businesses and they really just need to maximize their existing business to generate income. Uh, whether it's through, you know, having another stream, you know, through affiliate marketing, but doing every, they have to look at what, what am I already doing? And how can I maximize that? So I think that's an excellent point that you made. Now, you're also an international bestseller, right? Yeah. How crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it happened like a week ago. Yeah. Oh, so that's that's exciting because I and in 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 it's self self-published or yeah, so we we kind of gathered. Um, I was approached by an amazing person that has done a few books, and she reached out to 22 top entrepreneurs and said, hey, would you write a chapter and kind of share all your secrets, you know, in a chapter? And so mine is definitely in the five-minute pockets, like building your business in the five-minute pockets of your day. And so I, I went ahead and I gave my full list in the book, you know, and I gave people like the nitty gritty on how to set goals that are tangible and then how to reach those goals in the five-minute pockets of their day. And so it was kind of a neat experience, something that at first I said, no, <laughs> she asked me, I think three times because she's like, I'm sure. And I'm like, I don't feel like, you know, I'm successful enough or I have enough to say like what I do, anyone can do. I just brushed it off. But in um, hindsight, it was sharing what most people are needing and desperate for, which is like, how can I fit this in every single day? Because consistency is probably the key factor in the people who have the most success. They do it every single day, even if they don't want to, you know, they don't let life get into the way of building their business. They show up and it's a priority on their schedule. It's no different than brushing your teeth or brushing your hair or getting dressed for the day. Uh, an entrepreneur is going to show up to their business, you know, consistently um, and strategically. And so that's what we did. So it's pretty neat experience and something that um, I'll probably do again because it was so rewarding uh, to, to uh, be able to share that with anyone. And can you share with the audience your, the name of your book and where they can get it? Yeah, so it's called uh, 22 Entrepreneurs and Legacy Building Couples. And you can get it on Amazon. And so it's ships global and, uh, it's just a pretty awesome book. Yeah. Awesome. It's also on my link, which we can share in the comments. And why don't you speak it out for the people that will uh, be listening on, on the podcast? Uh, 22. No, uh, where they can find you. <laughs> was like, so they heard they, where they could get the book. So where can they find you on the, <laughs> yeah. So you can find me at, uh, Okay. Uh, I am Kate Moyer. So I am Kate 
Moyer, M-O-I-R.com. Um, and you can also find us on Facebook at The Mom Boss Mentor and the podcast also The Mom Boss Mentor and uh, on YouTube, The Mom Boss Mentor. So it's kind of all over either I am Kate Moyer or The Mom Boss Mentor. You can find me either way. Now, um, the Mom Boss Mentor is a Facebook group, right? Is it a free Facebook group? Free that community. Okay, yeah. so people, folks want to join, they can just, you know, go find a group on Facebook, join it, and be a part of the Mom Bosspreneur community. <laughs> yeah. so we do training every single Monday. We have guest speakers, um, free graphics, free guides, like tons of free downloads and training. Um, it's just a community that other people that are mom bosses, whether you're in any industry, it doesn't matter what industry you're in, um, are kind of looking at a community that's going to uplift them, support them, and give them that accountability. Awesome. Awesome. So let's talk about final words that you, you know, your final word of advice you would give a mom who's probably breastfeeding, listening to this podcast, <laughs> thinking like, okay, so I'm, I'm depleted of energy I have to return to work or have to decide what I'm going to do I don't want to go back to work I don't want to leave my kid or you know what would you say to that mom yeah so first and foremost I feel you (laughs) (laughs) been there done that don't want to go back um but uh you know it's really first of all is to find somebody that's going to support you and to help you kind of navigate the brainstorming of your options. Because sometimes that's your spouse, sometimes it's a family member or a friend, and sometimes people feel so isolated, they don't know where to go to. And that's where we come in at the Mom Bus Mentor is we're, we're your person, right? We want to help you create that plan and that strategy. But um, the, the next step is, is that you can't do it. And it's not taking time away from your family. It's actually giving your family more time, more freedom, and more flexibility. So now we look at my life with two kids going into school. Okay, both are full-time school this year coming in the fall. And to see the fact that, hey, they need a parent volunteer next Friday. I could do it. You know, hey, they forgot their lunch. I can run it in. I'm not an hour away and not being able to feed my child. You know, to have that ability to say all summer, let's work in the morning and go to the pool in the afternoon. That flexibility and freedom is giving my family a quality of life that I never even dreamed of when I had that one-year-old sitting in the nursing chair. So whatever your wildest dream is, you can build and create that vision and make it reality but it's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen without work. It's not going to happen without being consistent. And it's not going to happen unless you decide that it's going to happen. And so when we talk about the mind and and our our capacity, you know, to dream, that's a step as well that a lot of people um, haven't been given the freedom or the ability or opportunity to dream that big or to visualize themselves in a different situation. And so Yeah. So I guess my biggest thing is, is like, believe it, dream it, and then let's create a strategy and actually do it. Okay. Because I can only help so much, but I can't do it for people, right? I'm here to help somebody get through their breakthrough or get them to where they want to go, but they have to do the work. They have to want it for themselves. And just because someone's isolated doesn't mean that there that support doesn't exist. And oh. there, you know, it's so wonderful that you're building a supportive community um, for the aspiring mom bosses out there. So that's so awesome. So I just want to thank you, Kate, for you know sharing your knowledge here on the Boss Experience Podcast. And it's been ex- exciting to spend. Uh, this time with you and just to learn how you built your business. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And I look forward to everyone tuning in for the next episode of the Boss Experience Podcast. Take care and be well.